Well, hello everybody, and welcome back to G Bears Off Grid Ways, a homestead of the desert. And I'm going to do a short today here on August 3rd, 2021, because it's hot. It's down nine degrees now from what it was. It was 111 was the high I saw today, but 12% uh, humidity is starting to climb right now. It's been anywhere from uh, uh, eight to 10 somewhere in there all day long but uh, now that it the uh, day has gone by as you can see it's 10 minutes to 7 p.m and uh, the winds are starting to pick up so i'm going to venture outside now i might be able to survive out there we've had uh, uh one maybe two mile an hour uh, breezes all day except for one dust devil that came through and kicked it up to 20 miles an hour real quick Anyway, let's head on outside, and uh, while I'm doing that, I'll, uh, I'll tell you, I'm thinking about um, uh, getting into uh, NIFE batteries. That's uh, capital N-I, capital F-E, and that is, N-I is the... Uh, um, atomic symbol for um, nickel and FE is the atomic symbol for uh, iron so nickel iron batteries now this is nothing new nickel iron batteries have been around for a long time As a matter of fact I think uh, somebody like Edison had a, a patent on them way way but way back but uh, the thing about them is that they're good for like um, below zero all the way up to uh, 140 degrees Fahrenheit. And they're not affected by the, uh, well, they are affected a little bit, but they're, they're not affected to detrimentally um, for cold or extreme heat which is not the case with a lot of other batteries. And uh, lithium batteries, uh, uh, now the lithium, the, the L-I-F-E-P-O. Okay, so those are all atomic symbols and uh, the L-I is lithium, of course. Um, the F-E is iron, so it's lithium iron. And then the P is uh, for potassium, I think it is. And the O, would be oxygen. So um, they they put a few things together to make life pole four batteries, but uh, they are affected by the cold, so you have to be careful about that. So anyway, some of the things I did today was first I uh, got all the animals fed and watered. Chickens are all taken care of. Tomcats all taken care of. Then I went in and I watered the garden. Um, soaked it down really good and it was pretty dry in there even though I'd soaked it two days ago and uh, I dug down about six inches into the soil and it was dry so uh, just hot and dry and at, at night the uh, warm dry uh, winds or, or the dry winds they're not that warm at night they feel really cool after 111 degrees but uh, yeah that they, uh, they just keep on blowing through there and evaporating water like crazy. Uh, I took care of that. Then I came out here and I said, well, let's check the water in the batteries. And they all needed some water. So uh, I used uh, two gallons there. I still got three in the backup. But uh, I got all the batteries all maintained. And I keep a a record up there on the 2x4 and when I'm done with that 2x4 I'll move over to that one or that one or that one or I'll write down the wall so uh, you can see that it says uh, the bottom line there says 8-3 that's today so yeah I, I got all of these all filled up and uh, you can see, still see I'm running at 13 volts right now so it's uh, very good the um, turbine's only putting out um, low voltage or low wattage here. And uh, 
that set of batteries right there is the ones that were damaged and uh, they don't come up as high as these do and these are uh, refurbished batteries but uh, I think these last two on this end here are a little on the weak side so I had to do some wire switching today and I got to clean off the tops of the batteries because there was a little bit of uh, build up on them but uh, I think these last two here are a little on the weak side and I've got a warranty on them so I want to uh, separate those out of the uh, bank and test them and if they are weak I'll take them back and uh, get replacements for them. Now those two in the center seem to be the strongest of the six. And uh, the others over there, of course, are still good, but uh, they're not as strong as these. I think these are running like, uh, when, I, when I checked them, these were running at like uh, 13 volts for the center one. And then those two on the end there were 12.9. But this one over here was down to 12.4. So that... Uh, and I, when, I, when I'm saying this one, this one, this one, I'm talking two batteries at a time because these are six volt batteries. When there's three caps, that's three two volt cells. Three caps mean six volts. So you see I got that one wire going between the positive and the negative to turn two six volt batteries into a 12 volt battery. And then those two are a 12 volt and those two are a 12 volt. Those two down there are a 12 volt. And then every two up here, 12 volt, 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 12 volt. 12 volt. Uh, they, uh, I think if I ever was going to do it again, I would probably um, still stay with the 12 volt. And the reason, I mean, people tell me all the time that 24 volts is better and then uh, some people say 36 volts better, and then 48 volts better. Well, 48, uh, from from my understanding of uh, solar, 48 volts is good for um, grid tie. But for off grid, uh, 1224 are your two uh, top lines. The only reason I got stay with 12 is because I bought that little. Um, uh, Viking battery charger down there that has a complete repair mode set up in it. So I can take any set of these batteries um, out of the link just by disconnecting a bolt on the top and disconnecting a wire and I disconnect a, a, a 12 volt set out of there throw that um, thing on, on that set of 12 volts and do a repair on that one set of batteries and then tie those back in but separate out the next two and do the same thing I got plenty of time to do that so why not do it right what that does is uh, it brings those batteries all the way up like new again and uh, then the other thing you got to remember is that there's a thing called equalization that you're supposed to do with um, lead acid batteries and the midnight actually has a setting on it where you can set it to do that equalization on a regular basis and it will run the equalization through the whole battery bank but uh, when you do equalization to be really efficient with it I leave that set to manual so I can put it on manual whenever I want to do it you need to take off all of the caps of all of the batteries. Take all the caps and just set them beside the batteries. And then do an equalization. Don't leave the caps on when you do an equalization. Also, leave the door open, get lots of ventilation because you're going to be putting off a lot of hydrogen gas, which is explosive. So you want to keep that uh, very well aerated. Anyway, that's about all I really have. Um, I'm going to be, like I said, I'm going to be messing with some uh, uh, experiments and I'm thinking about doing a, a uh, knifey uh, earth battery where I'm going to use uh, dirt inside of uh, my holder and, and then nickel, of course, will be my positive pole and 
iron will be my negative pole. And the thing is that uh, the best electrolyte for knifey batteries is an alkaline solution or an alkaline electrolyte. And I'm going to be making up my own alkaline solution, but it takes a little time to do that. So I'll set that all up. Uh, I need to pick up some lemons to do that too. But uh, I'll set that all up and get that going. And then I'll show you what comes out of it. And I'm wondering if I do that, um, what kind of battery I can actually get out of the system. And then if, it's, uh, if it do does work out pretty good, I've got some two inch iron pipe and I'll cut those into cylinders and uh, then take some um, iron, the, the iron and, and the nickel is gonna be the biggest problem. But uh, I'll just use a couple of uh, nickel coins for the test. But if it works, then I'll look at buying some uh, nickel rod and uh, I'll use nickel rod for the other sides. And I wanna see what I can get out of that. It'll be an interesting experiment. So anyway, another one, a little, leave you with a little giggle. Um, oh, before I do that, uh, lumber prices, they've come down. I uh, checked with Home Depot, two by fours came down from 970 a piece, or 974 a piece, down to 522. And, um, OSB was up to $64. It's down to $40 and 65 cents a sheet. So prices have come down a little bit, but I'm gonna wait for them to come down a lot more than that before I go buy any. $40 a sheet is ridiculous. When I built my cabin here, the, uh, the first part of the cabin, the OSB I bought for the roof, uh, I was only paying 965, I think it was. I think 965 was somewhere around there for a sheet. So $40, that's uh, five times as much, or close to five times as much. And then, uh, you know, I think uh, when I did the second part of the cabin, when I did the, the bedroom, it was all the way up to like 13 or $14 a sheet. And I was complaining then, so there ain't no way I'm gonna pay $40 a sheet. But I've got to get my bigger chicken coop built pretty soon because I'm going to have some chicks coming along, hopefully. Uh, she's still nesting on the eggs, but uh, nothing has come out of it yet. So I'm going to let it keep going for a little while longer. Speaking out about chicks, um, when the COVID thing was going around and they were sending out all those uh, stimulus checks, a friend of mine decided he was going to use his stimulus checks to add to his flock. So he did, and I said, why'd you do that? He says, well, money ain't for nothing and the chicks were free. <laughs> All right, on that note, I'll close this off. Thanks for joining me, everybody. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, and don't forget to share with your friends. This is G-Bear signing off.